Now for our story. This evening, after supper, Aunt Mary Lane's niece, Peggy Douglas, had put on her warmest coat and her galoshes, tied a bright scarf around her head, and run across the little path leading from the Lane farm to the plumber home. It was snowing, a light, fluffy snow floating down lazily. Peggy liked the feeling of the cold air on her cheeks. Recently, she'd been so occupied with her personal, emotional life that she'd hardly noticed the beauty of the outside world. Though ordinarily, she was very sensitive to the changing seasons. But tonight, as she hurried along the little path, she suddenly felt more like her old self, carefree and useful. She stopped impulsively, rolled a hard little snowball, and threw it across the field with all her strength, the way she used to do when she was a youngster. Then, feeling a little foolish at this side as relapse, she resumed her walk toward the plumber house. A moment later, Peggy knocked at the door, which was opened by her friend James. Hi, Peggy. Come in, come in before all the hooks are tapped. The house is just beginning to be dark. Okay. Here's our sip of Ah, you're all out of breath. Did you run over? How practical. It's wonderful out here, isn't it? I was out a while ago to get nervous some kindling. And this is the sort of weather we used to play for when we were kids. Remember that big red sled round the house? Oh, do I? I doubt if I'll ever get much nearer to heaven than I used to be when Randy gave me a ride on that sled. It was called the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> Randy was so fat. He used to paint it and wax it and fuss over it. It reminds me, didn't you two have an accident one time? Me, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll never forget it. Randy was so cross, wasn't he? He said it was all my fault. Why, what did you have to do with it? Well, I guess I was to bring him away. You see, I asked him something, and he turned his head to answer me and lost control, and we ran smack into a big tree. <laughs> it didn't bother me, but Randy hurt his shoulder. Only that wasn't what worried him. He was furious because we made a dent in the slide. He <laughs> got over it, though. Oh, Randy's nice that way. He gets awfully mad, but then he forgets all about it in the next five minutes. Yeah. Well, for heaven's sake, what's the matter with me? Letting me stand there all bundled up. Here, give me your things, Peggy. I'll hang them up in the kitchen. Okay. By the way, that man had a letter from Andy today. Really? What did he have to say? He said to remember him to you. Did he mention anything about when he expects to come home? Well, I think he said he might be home in a month or two, but he wasn't sure. You know how it is. Uh-huh. Oh, well. He'll certainly be home by spring. Don't you think so? He ought to be. Oh, I wish you were here now. So do I. Well, say so that to my room, Peggy. Okay. Where's your mother tonight? She went into a nervous. Mother's crazy about pictures. She practically never misses one. Well, here we are. Take yourself at home. Thank you. Your room looks awfully nice, Jim. Thanks. Now, I'm dying to know the big news. I meant to ask you as soon as you arrived, but we got to talking about Randy and I know, Jane. I know you forget all about me whenever Randy's name is mentioned. I do not. I just... Oh, Jane, that was so pleasing. And making me dress. Oh, it's becoming. It would take a lot more than a couple of dresses to make me fit it. Why, Jane, that's not true. You have a very nice face. Well, let's not change the subject. I want to hear that, that something exciting you told me about when you found All right. But... Maybe it won't seem exciting to you. Well, tell me. I wanted to invite you to my wedding, Jim. Your wedding, Peggy? No. So you still planned it. Tomorrow I'm looking for it. Yes, Jim, I do. Oh, Peggy. Oh, my goodness. You don't have to look as if you've just lost your best friend. Well, it isn't as if oh, I'm not going away in here. I got it. I thought surely by this time you'd understand how I feel. That's funny. Because I've been thinking that surely by this time you'd have come to your senses. Come to my senses. You know, Peggy, you remember our talk the day I went to see Dr. Lewis and kept him in later. It's hardly possible I'd forget that day. Well, then, of course you remember what you told me about this. You've got a lot of things out there, Peggy. Don't try to pretend to me. I know you too well for that. You know very well what you told me that day. You told me you were still in love with your need. Well, you suppose I did. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with my marrying Nicholas. Peggy, how can you say such a thing? You can't know it. 
But I do mean it. You mean you can sit there and tell me you intend to just cold-bloodedly go into a marriage with nothing? Knowing that you're in love with Bill? Well, it isn't as though I were deceived in with her. She doesn't expect. I mean, our marriage is to be based on friendship, companionship. That's nonsense. Well, I don't think it ever did. Just because it's somewhat out of the ordinary doesn't mean that you're determined to go blindly ahead and hurt yourself even more. It's bad enough the way things are. But at least your life isn't messed up. And Bill's doing everything he can to straighten his life out. If you'd only be patient, wait and see. Be patient. Wait and see what, Jim? It, it just makes me sick, that's all. To see you deliberately throwing away something so precious, so rare. You love Bill. You know that he loves you. It's the most wonderful thing that can happen to a person, Peggy. If you only realize, look, Jim, I think I realize something that you don't. All this talk about true love. Well, I've seen how much true love is worth. Bill married to me. Left me, Peggy. You know very well he did better that. He's done everything he can to iron things out so that he can go back and rebuild his life somehow. You know that, Peggy. No, Jim. That's just it. What you don't seem to understand is that you can't go back. There's too much in between. Too much bitterness. Too many things to forget. Though it seems to me there's nothing to do but to go ahead. Oh, oh good. Excuse me, Peggy. Hello? Hello, Jane. Nicholas Dorn. Oh. Is Peggy there? I phoned the lanes, and that Mary said she was with you. Yes, just a minute. I'll call her. Peggy? It's Nicholas. Just a moment. She'll be right here. How are you, Jane? Haven't seen you around town much lately. I've been pretty busy. Here, Peggy. Thank you. Hello, Nick. Peggy, I, I hope you don't mind my breaking in on you this way. <laughs> Why, of course not, Nicholas. I'm glad you called. What's on your mind? I was wondering if you plan to be in town tomorrow. Well, I hadn't thought about it, but I suppose I will be. Well, I I wish you'd make it a point to be, Peggy. I I have something to tell you. Well, why don't you tell me now? No, I can't. Not over the phone. But what's it about? Is it a surprise? Well, it might be in a way. Well, I wish you'd tell me. You've got me so curious now, I won't be able to sleep tonight. I'm sorry, darling, but I'd rather not. I I have to see you. Well, tell me this much. Is it something wrong? Well, I think you'd better wait and decide that for yourself. Look, give me a ring when you get to town tomorrow. Do that for sure, will you, Peggy? All right, Nicky. I will. Uh, see you tomorrow, then. Bye, Peggy. Goodbye. Peggy stood thoughtfully by the telephone. There'd been an urgency in Nicholas Dorn's voice, almost a note of desperation. She wondered what he had in mind. And in Wakefield, in his room at the Brown Palace Hotel, Nicholas, too, was standing with his hand still on the receiver, thinking, well, that's the first step, anyway. I still haven't told her, but... I just hope I don't get weak need at the last minute. I've got to do it. Peggy's in love with Bill Mead. He's in love with her. It'd be insane for us to go ahead with the marriage. I've got to tell her that. But can I? Have I got what it takes to look Peggy in the eyes? Loving her as I do? Tell her I won't marry her? After all, Nicholas Dorn was a very unhappy young man. He wasn't bargain for this when he first proposed marriage to Peggy. In fact, it was just this sort of emotional strain, the doubts and confusion, which Nicholas had believed it was possible to avoid. He kept remembering the words of that girl he'd talked to the other day. The girl who said, Don't beat your head against the stone wall. Don't ever think you can make someone love you if that person's in love with someone else. Nicholas knew he'd been speaking the truth. But what he didn't know, yet, what would have surprised him very much, was the fact that the girl who spoke so wisely, whose advice had made him stop and reconsider, 
with Chip Lee, the wife of the man with whom Peggy is still in love. 